ZK3's AI is famously not so smart. Paradox has addressed this by updating the AI with the most recent 1.7 Bastion update, which I've played around with for quite a while. I can confirm it's a good update to the AI. As one last hurrah to the old AI, I'm going to push the boundaries of its capacity. The question for today is, can I guide the AI's hand into making the Roman Empire, starting as a count and never being independent? This special challenge run was requested by Tara Kitsune on my Twitch channel using channel points. If you have a run you want to suggest, come on down to the channel and request something. Maybe it'll become a YouTube video too. Without further ado, creating the Roman Empire as a subject of the Byzantines. Let's get into it. For this run, I'm using a custom character, since most of the challenge comes from seeing if the AI will do its job, and because we're starting as a Count in Calliopolis. The character I've made is designed to live for a while with Temperate, and then to have a relatively well-rounded stat set and an Intrigue focus for good early gameplays. Our strategy for this run is to use Intrigue to get ourselves three things. Money, contract changes, and strategic abductions. I will accomplish those things by simply waiting until we get the appropriate perks to do this. We're aiming for the schemer tree of the Intrigue lifestyle, and to get golden obligations from the stewardship tree for infinite money, essentially. For marriage, we're going to grab ourselves a good alliance if we can, and a high Intrigue character with that if possible. Prioritize high Intrigue over a good alliance, but both is best. Once you're married, have your wife support schemes and build up your perks. Once you have access to fabricated hooks, get a hook on the Emperor using your insane Intrigue, and use that hook to grab council rights for free. With your council rights, become a spy master to really cement your ability to get hooks and to murder people. This is where our games will now diverge depending on how the AI acts. I will describe the events of my run and the techniques I use to accomplish things as well as what you can learn from my actions. This run is basically an entirely intrigue oriented run, so if you've ever wondered how to conquer a place without needing war, here's the chance. For now, we're still merely a count in Calliopolis, although we don't have much, we need to build up this county and gain more domain. We may have trouble doing this with our current income, but we can use golden obligations and hooks to get basically unending money. We're not going to do that until we've completed the schemer tree though, so for now, just sit and wait, looking for opportunities to grab new duchies for your family via intrigue. In my game, Thessalonica got my attention. I wanted their gold mine, and they had a pretty large domain, so their unfortunate family was in my sights. The woman I had married in my run was from Thessalonica as well, which was actually unplanned but just kind of worked out by coincidence. Lucky me. Another stroke of luck for me in this hostile takeover of Thessalonica is that the ruler died on his own under mysterious circumstances which I genuinely promised was not me, and then his infant child took over the throne. The heir of this infant child was in fact my wife, isn't that convenient? I plotted the death of this child and succeeded relatively easily. Now my wife is Duchess of Thessalonica, which gives me a strong ally in the vicinity and an upgrade to a duke in one generation via our shared inheritance. A solid start for sure. In your game, you can do the exact same thing by killing off certain family members at strategic points. If we check the line of succession on a title, you can see if someone who is married into your family is there. If you have a son married to a foreign girl or a daughter matched literally married to a foreign boy, murder your way through the succession line until that foreign child is the ruler. They will be stuck in a marriage with your family and the AI is pretty loath to divorce generally speaking, so it should be secure. From here, I ended up a vassal of Philippopolis when my liege was replaced by a claimant. This was actually a big opportunity for me since now I could gain a duchy through meritocracy, as well as conquer the counts within this duchy. I had my eyes on Brysis since it was, well, my only neighboring target. While usually it would be hard to win wars as a single count, I had my wife in Thessalonica to help me out. So using a fabricate claim council action, I easily conquered the county. My wife also passed away at some point and was succeeded by my son. This was actually a very good thing because it meant that my son could build up his own prestige, piety, and money along with his long reign bonus in his duchy. He still was my ally as well to help me against Brysis. With Brysis conquered, Thessalonica in line to inherit and a pretty secure position, I decided that it was time to switch to a stewardship focus to obtain golden obligations and meritocracy. Before then, I also diverged the college so I could have some control over tech and add some new traditions. Specifically, I was looking to add by the sword later down the line to be acquiring new land easier. One little bit of trivia is that when you diverge culture as a vassal, all counties of the original culture in the realm are eligible to convert. And my goodness, in my run, the culture sure did convert. 
As part of my focus on Intrigue, I also showed off another technique rather needlessly, but effectively nonetheless. I got a claim to Duchy of Philippopolis, and rather than going to war for it right away, I started an abduction scheme against my liege. This was easy as a spy master of the Duchy and a massive Intrigue score. I created a claimant faction whose demands I pushed once the scheme was complete. Because the demands take a few days to send, I don't lose success chance to capture the liege while abducting. Now that he is in my prison, he rejects my demands, putting us at war. He is, however, in my prison, so I win immediately. Now I am the Duke of Philippopolis, also gaining his previous domain because he had a second duchy. So suddenly, I've skyrocketed in power to a duke with another duchy on the way for his succession, and six castles. Now we can begin snowballing. From here, I more or less abandon the intrigue path of this run, not because it is ineffective, but because I have enough power to do what my laid out goal is for this run. If you were playing yourself, you may wish to continue this process of murdering and marrying to grab more duchies throughout the Empire. Now it's all about getting hooks and cashing them in. We're going to take the AI's money and invest it into actually useful things like farms and men-at-arms. We're essentially building up for some massive wars to get the various regions of the world that we need to make the Roman Empire. I recommend building two economic buildings and two military buildings, generally speaking. This can change based on your specific men-at-arms setup, or for roleplay or cultural tradition stacking and so on, so here's the priority list that I use. Economic buildings in the following order as applicable. Manor houses, farms and fields, trade ports, orchards, forestry, hill farms, wetlands farms, desert agriculture, quarries, hunting grounds, pastoral lands. Pick the highest two in the list and build them. These come first. For military buildings, do this order. Regimental grounds, camelry, elephantry, barracks, military camps. Pick the highest two and build them. These come after economic buildings. I never build forts, I find that to be completely useless, don't worry about those. And then of course, special buildings like universities, gold mines, those always come first. As previously said, your priorities may change depending on your composition. If you use a lot of cavalry, then hunting grounds may be a superior choice. I generally prefer barracks because heavy infantry is powerful, and I like military camps because when it combined with crossbowmen, it can make some extremely powerful units. You can build the strongest heavy infantry and pikemen along with the most powerful crossbows to be just about any composition. The remaining men-at-arms slots are for siege equipment, and some light cavalry for pursuit damage. The life of our first character has been spent at building up our power since he's got the skills to do it. Our son, however, does not have those capabilities. What he has, instead, is sanctioned loopholes. I chose to have my son get a learning education simply for sanctioned loopholes so that we can buy claims to every piece of land that we need just using piety. Getting piety is pretty easy when you can pilgrimage or just build temples with the immense cash that the domain from our father generated. Speaking of immense amount of cash, this video is sponsored by, uh, drumroll please, myself. Yes, that's right, I'm announcing my Patreon starting with the release of this video. If you enjoy video essays, history, language, and politics, I'm making content about all those things over on Patreon. My first content project over there is the Polyglot Channel, which involves three steps. Speaking a language, taking three months to learn as much as possible, and then creating a video essay in that language. You viewers get to pick the language I learned from a poll of five choices I put together. And normally only patrons can vote, but for this very first project, anyone can vote. Check out the description for a link to the Patreon poll, as well as a link to my patron's mission statement, and some samples of the kind of work I do, all available for free. Thank you for listening, back to the video. Using sanctioned loopholes, you can buy claims to any duchy or county level title using piety. If you're less than a king, you can buy a kingdom claim, and if you're less than an emperor, you can buy empire claims. My first target is Jerusalem, which is a bit ambitious given that it's a crusader state, but I have faith in my boys. We simply buy the claim to the duchy and then push the claim more. Turns out though that my faith was misplaced. I threw for content in this war due to one oversight on my part, which you can learn from this as the viewer. Holy Orders. Now, as an orthodox ruler, Catholics cannot call Holy Orders against me. That being said, Jerusalem is at war with other Muslims in the region against whom Holy Orders can be hired. As in CK2, Holy Orders can only be hired against religious enemies, but unlike CK2, Holy Orders can fight non-hostile religious enemies. In CK2, a hired Holy Order would literally sit out the battle if they ended up fighting non-hostile religions. Not so in CK3. Hence, the Templars or Hospitallers or whoever the Jerusalemites hired were fighting my good Christian army and thus defeated me. Remember that a lost war isn't that bad when your economy is strong and your realm stable. I simply shrugged off the loss and looked to regain my money. 
Once the Jerusalemites were at peace with their religious enemies, I declared war once again, and this time won, since they didn't have the support of their holy order. At this point, let me go over what other land we need to create the Roman Empire. Here's the map that I've highlighted for you. These duchies are Genoa, Romagna, Venezia, Croatia, Latia, Capua, Apulia, Sicily, Tunis, Thessalonica, Athens, Thrace, Antioch, Jerusalem, and Alexandria. Assuming your game is not completely screwed, you should already have quite a few of these, which means we only need a few good wars to pull this off. Because we built up so much domain, the wars are pretty easy with the explicit exception of Latium, given that the Pope is a bit powerful with his unending mercenaries. You might think Romagna and Genoa are tough because the Holy Roman Empire is strong, but in reality they're a paper tiger. All you need to do is wait for an emperor to die, which almost inevitably gets them thrown into a civil war. If you can't wait for that, ally France and England or whoever else is around to help you and just call them in. This technique also works on the Pope. CK3 developers, please make alliance building a little more complicated. I would love if marriages only created non-aggression pacts and then alliances came out of some sort of agreement like a feudal contract. It would be better for roleplay and mechanically it would be better as well. Sidebar, done. At this point, I focused entirely on conquering the last bits of land. I continued to improve my domain as I went, but I did pull one truly Giga Chad maneuver. I allied the Holy Roman Empire to conquer the Pope. This isn't really particularly relevant to the run strategy, but I just enjoyed the concept in my mind of the papally sanctioned empire coming back to help an orthodox king take Rome. Quite ironic. Yeah, we should be, this should be easy. Yeah, he's not even, he's, he's literally trying to occupy the atrium to get some no war score whatsoever, so he's gonna win by default. Pog, easy clap, dude. Aside from that, I needed more power to defeat the juggernaut of an empire I had previously allied. They had conquered Tunis at one point, making my life much harder, but not impossibly harder by any means. I decided to spend some time chilling out with chat and building up my domain more to outpace the empire. In the meantime, I was planning out one important issue for how to make the AI form Rome. Only a living legend can form the Roman Empire. Well that sucks, because the AI only extremely rarely reaches that kind of fame. Luckily, I had a plan. I'll be going over it once we actually have the requisite land to make the empire, but rest assured that we will make this happen through a little bit of big brain manipulation. I spent quite a bit of time building up my domain, which by this point was composed of Jerusalem, Cairo, and Rome, along with some bits and pieces of Thessalonica, Philippopolis, and Latium. There's not much to go over besides the previously mentioned priority list of buildings, so I'll skip to the final wars with the not holy, not Roman, not imperial empire. First of all, if you need to do multiple wars against the empire, I reckon waiting for a divine right to be able to push multiple claims at once against your enemies. Fighting the empire multiple times is tough and time consuming, so why not use the tech to get it all at once? You should certainly ally France or England along with any other strong realm nearby depending on how your game has gone so far. This isn't necessarily needed, but can assure a victory against an otherwise daunting opponent. Defeating the Empire is all about taking good battles and sieging whatever counties are fastest to siege. Remember that war score for an occupation is based on the number of subholdings and the development of those counties. This is why you ought to start in Tuscany and simply move north. You need to grab a piece of the war goal to stop your enemy from getting ticking war score. Essentially, siege down the rich central Italian counties for high war score, win battles while waiting for your allies to join you, and grab at least one piece of the war goal to stop ticking war score, and you'll win. By the way, this concept is how all wars work. It's just not often that you fight such a massive realm that it really matters. Either way, you'll win your wars against the Holy Roman Empire pretty easily with this technique in mind, and now it's time to force the AI to create the Roman Empire. At this point, the Byzantine Emperor has everything he needs to create the Roman Empire, all that's left is the fame requirement. It's nigh on impossible to give an AI character fame. It's easy to give ourselves fame. What we therefore can do is get our character to max level fame, then get him to become the Byzantine Emperor. Only problem is, according to the rules of our run, we can't ever become independent, let alone the Emperor. Not to mention that would defeat the whole purpose of the run if we just made the Empire ourselves. The answer is that we must simultaneously become famous, become the Emperor, and become the AI all at once. We can do this with a particular series of actions. First, obtain Living Legend status. We do this honestly through the fame that we gained while fighting the Empire, but if, say, your character died and you have to rebuild your fame, you can go down the center path of the Diplomacy Perk Tree to get a lot of prestige modifiers and just host feasts and hunts as much as possible to get fame. Once you have max level fame, use Meritocracy to get a claim on the Byzantine Empire. The next one will be a little confusing to the uninitiated, but you're going to attempt to imprison a vassal with a high failure chance. We want to fail and start a tyranny war. Once the war breaks out, do not raise your troops, simply surrender and get deposed. This seems counterproductive, but trust me, this is how we do it. Our heir now has a court member, his father, that has living legend fame, a claim on the Byzantine Empire, and a dream. A dream to revive the Roman Empire. 
We shall attack our liege, who is hopefully weak, and if not, we can get alliances to save us, to push our father's claim to the Empire. Once you win, unpause the game and watch the AI mend the schism and form the Roman Empire. It is done. Congrats. An AI Roman Empire, and all it took was a little bit of manipulation. Okay, here we go. He just did this is schism. So he mended the schism. So there we go. He did that. Next to be the Roman Empire. Surely. So if you're Christian, you can at least ally a Christian lord. Hey, he did it! Okay, there you go. The AI did it. Time. He did it. Insane. He has done it. So the AI does create the Roman Empire. If you give them everything that they need, they will create it. Confirmed. There you go. Boom. Hog. I'll be honest, I did not expect the AI to be capable of clicking the button. I'm not sure why, but I assumed the AI was, for whatever reason, programmed to not click these decisions, since they can be rather apprehensive to do so. In particular, clicking the Mend the Schism button surprised me, since it costs so much piety to do so. Regardless, it is confirmed that the AI will click Roman Empire and Schism Mending buttons, if it has the prerequisites to do so. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more like it, since I plan to release more videos going over my viewer runs, which you can see on my Twitch channel using the link below. Check out the Patreon as well, and vote on what language you want me to learn for my Polyglot Challenge over there. And maybe consider becoming a patron if you like the mission statement on my page. Remember, it's free to go read, so have at it. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you next time. Peace.